Hi, thanks for joining me today. I have to say I'm really delighted that Kim has decided to join us on this YouTube session this morning and um, the first of the year and I'm hoping that she'll be able to join us on other ones later on in the year. Today we're going to be talking about starting out as a step family. You know, that business about first of all you become um, in a relationship with your future partner and at that stage when you commit to each other and either move in or marry. Uh, that's when you're starting out and that's when you need to think in advance about what you, what, how you're going to uh, manage things. I post once a week, so subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and I'll let you know every time I post. This week we're talking about starting out in a step family and it's only when we become committed to the relationship either by moving in or marrying that we can see that in fact there may be uh, his, his or her children have a much higher priority than you'd ever realized before. So um, it's kind of like uh, up until that time you're, uh, you're thinking that you're, you and they are going to be managing everything and suddenly you move into this household situation and find that the children have a priority and that your partner is actually co-parenting with the other child's parent and then suddenly instead of you and they being co-parenting the children together you can often find that you're being ostracized or isolated from decisions regarding the children or participating in things that they all do together but actually the role that you thought you'd have in this situation isn't like that at all. Does that mean anything to you, Kim? Yes, I think that's a very, very interesting and pertinent point. I think when you enter into um, a step family, nobody really asks you. It's not something you sit down and talk about. What's my role going to be in this family now? Um, you know, you probably moved in. The children either stay with you a week on week off or they visit at the weekends, but you never explicitly were asked, would you mind looking after the children while I go to football or I go to the gym or I do this, that or the other. And there's kind of this expectation that you're just going to slot in as a parent, surrogate parent, and pick up the slack and do all the things that the other parent at home um, is doing. Um, and you weren't even asked. Um, and sometimes it can leave you feeling a bit angry and resentful, and it's just not discussed. And I think this is something you should sit down with your partner before you move in together and really talk about what is the role? What is their expectation of you? What's your expectation of the role you're going into? And also, how do the children feel? Maybe they don't want to be left alone with you. Maybe they do. But this is something I think which needs a, a wider discussion and a consensus coming together because otherwise you don't want those feelings of anger and resentment building up and just feeling that you're just being dumped on. Does that make sense? It does and I think that um, there's a huge number of assumptions around because the, it doesn't get talked about in advance and then their assumption is that you're going to slot into this role which mm. you just described which is the one whereby suddenly let's all just be one happy family now that you're here and so you're going to participate in all the parental activities like as though you were the real parent and that can build huge resentment in you but also um, you're as you've just alluded you know the children may not want you to look after them the co-parent the the other parent uh, the other biological parent may not want um, certain things and yet suddenly everybody's thrown into this in situation whereby um, there's a whole loads of assumptions and people getting really resentful about everything. Exactly because when you're step parenting you are not the parent unless you go through the adoption but that doesn't happen very often so you are the step parent you're the kind of just the person who is happens to have married your, um, their father 
Um, but that doesn't make you a mother because you don't have any legal rights um, to give medication, take them to hospitals, to the doctors. And these are things which need to be thought about because if you are on your own with them and something happens, you don't have any power of attorney, I guess, over their sort of medical records. And if you can't get hold of either parent, what do you do? You're in a bit of a dilemma um, because it's not your choice to make, really. So these are things which are very important and need to really be discussed before you enter into the step parenting relationship and because I as you said there were just so many assumptions made and I don't think I even sat down and thought about well ooh, what do I want to be in this child's life you know when my stepdaughter came into my life do I want to be a mother do I want to be a mother figure do I want to just be another important adult, adult in her life and it was only through sort of a period of time that I realized I didn't want to be her mother because she had a mother um, who she had a close relationship with, but I could be another significant other in her life, but I didn't want to take on the parenting aspect of that. I didn't want to discipline. I didn't want to be the one to always be saying no to her. Um, so it took a long time and a few arguments, I have to say, um, but eventually we did come to that consensus, but that would have saved us a lot of problems early on if we discussed it. Um, the discipline point is a really good one because... Um, it, it, it is it is an area where um, you can run into you, you really don't want to be the disciplinarian but then the parent may just assume you're going to take on that role with no problem but that but in fact actually as a step parent it's quite important to not come in as the one who says you can't do this and you can't do that no. because then the child comes back to you and says you're not my parent, you can't tell me what to do. So exactly. it needs to be done in a different way in a step family than from a bio family because you need to, first of all, set the boundary that everybody is prepared to agree to and everybody knows about in advance. And then you as a step parent can, can enforce the boundary and everybody knows about it. But you can't be left to managing the discipline. And this is one of the things that about the role because you're the, the if that hasn't been discussed beforehand mm -hmm. then Absolutely. you can be plunged into the one who's saying don't do this and don't do that and if you fall into that trap you then become possibly the wicked step parent which isn't what your intention yeah. was at all to begin with no, so you didn't enter into it to be the bad cop all the time, you know, you want to have a good relationship with the stepchildren, and that's really important, but that does take time to build, and when they come at the weekend, if you have kind of house rules, these need to be introduced gently, but with the support of the biological parent, because otherwise you are painted as this wicked stepmother who's imposing all these rules, because you're just assumed that you're taking on that role, which you haven't asked for and didn't want. Um, and again, I think the wider family as well, this needs to be discussed with them because it's not just you and him anymore, it's friends, family, etc. And this is why it's such a surprise when you go in because you don't have an inkling that this is what you're moving into, which is sorting no. out the roles, no. not only with your partner, but with the children and the other biological parent and what you've just said now, which is the extended family, the grandparents, mm -hmm. etc. Because they can make huge assumptions about the role that you th they think you're going to have in the family. Um, yep. And prior to entering into this family, you have an entirely different relationship with your partner. Absolutely. So, so it's, it's, it, it becomes, it can come as a, as a huge, huge surprise. So, <laughs> so, um, the, the, you know, what, what we're thinking about with regard to this, um, video is that, um, to look ahead when you're in a step parenting situation and or going to be moving into one and think through what it is you actually want um, and be ready for changes in behavior from say the children once you move from being daddy's friend to being daddy's partner um, and then possibly talk about this to your partner before you do anything like commit move in or marry and then think about what other people's roles are in the children's life, what the children want your role to be, what you want your role to be, what the grandparents may want your role to be, and think it through with them rather than 
launching in and making assumptions and draw back from taking on roles that you sh that maybe um, you wouldn't want like disciplinarian before you start. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, that's what we have concluded. <laughs> Definitely. And it is something that you just don't think about before entering in or moving in with your partner, what your role in this family is going to be. And it has huge implications for you. Yep, and very, diff that. And very yeah. difficult to unravel. Yeah, it is. So Kim and I run workshops and sessions and uh, we run booklets and there's an email response service. Um, for links to my website and our social media, see the description box below.